Never Stop Learning, week 183. We're gonna take a quick look at how to create a shoelace pattern brush in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014. All right, so here I am in Adobe Illustrator and I've got this guy set up here. If I go into outline mode, you see it's just a basic path and back in preview mode, you see we have this shoelace appearance applied to it. The way I was able to create that is I had a pattern brush set up right over here. Now, if I were to zoom out a little bit, you see what I was able to create with that pattern brush. So right here, I was able to just stretch out the widths and then just add a uh, drop shadow to it to get this effect. All right, so I'm gonna go back, zoom in 100%, and I'll get started by using this guy as a template. All right, what I wanna do is drop the opacity down to 50%, and I'm gonna hit Command-2 to lock this guy down. This way, I don't accidentally move it around anywhere. All right, now, if you take a good look at this, it's actually just set up into two different pieces. Right here we have a shoelace, and then we have these aglets over here at the end. All right, so I'm gonna focus on the shoelace portion first, and then we'll create this aglet afterwards. All right, this is just a basic shape, so I'm gonna hit the M key to grab my um, rectangle tool. I'm gonna click and drag right over here. I'm gonna use the space bar to allow me to reposition this guy. And once I got it set up, I'm gonna release the space bar key and then come over here to the bottom right. And once this is set up, I'll go ahead and release the mouse. All right, what it's done here is it's added that pattern brush because that was the last thing I had selected. I'm gonna hit the D key on my keyboard. That's gonna give me a default appearance of a white fill with a black stroke. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in these corners by clicking and dragging on these little annotations and release. Now it looks like I've gone a little bit too far here, so grab these annotations again and then just stretch them out exactly where you need them. All right, let me move this guy down. I'm gonna hold down this shift key to make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. Now, because this is gonna be a pattern brush later, I'm gonna be expanding a lot of my shapes just to make sure everything is nice and basic and it'll work a lot easier as a pattern brush later. All right, so at the moment, if you take a look over here in the tools panel, you can see that there's a fill and a stroke applied to this. So I'm gonna come over here to object, expand. I'm gonna choose fill and stroke, click okay. And now if you take a look, there's no strokes here because if I move these guys, you'll see that they're just fills. So right here, we're in outline mode and we have a white shape and a black shape over here. All right, bring it back into preview mode and I'll bring these guys back together. All right, next I wanna create this little pattern I have going on in here. All right, so a way to do that is just grab my line segment tool. So I'm gonna hit the backslash key, which is in the upper right section just below my delete key. I'm gonna click and drag while holding down the shift key and I'm gonna release. I just wanna make sure I'm gonna cover this entire shape here. I'll hit the D key to give it the default appearance. I need to bring up my fill by hitting X and I'm gonna hit the forward slash key to get rid of that fill. I'll hit the V key to grab my selection tool and I'm gonna option, click and drag right here. All right, I'm gonna hold down the shift key to make sure it's nice and straight. And once I get this gap to the exact location I want, I'm gonna go ahead and release. All right, I'm gonna hit command D a couple of times until I fill in this shape. So Illustrator remembered how far I made that uh, little transformation and it's duplicating that over and over again for me. I'm gonna hit the V key again on my keyboard to grab the selection tool, select all of these new lines I just created, command G to group them all together. Now let's take a look over here in the tools panel. You see they're all strokes, so we have to expand those. I'm gonna come over here to the object menu, over here expand, choose okay, and there you go, now these guys are set up. While I have them selected, I'm gonna hit the O key on my keyboard to grab the reflect tool. I'm gonna to click and drag, introduce the shift key to keep it nice and straight. Now take a look at my cursor. When I hold down the option key, that shows me that it's gonna make a copy of the shape for me. So I'm gonna release my mouse first, and now I've made a copy of those guys. I'll select them both together, and I wanna bring up my pathfinder. Over here in the window menu, if you scroll down, you're gonna be able to find Pathfinder, and I have it over here on the right. So I'm gonna choose this option here for Unite, and now I've squished them all together. Now at this point, I could uh, start doing some readjustments here. All I wanna do is kinda of line these guys up, and I'm just doing this by eye. I'm sure I could uh, get this a lot more accurate if I took some time, but right around there looks good to me. All right, so what we got going on here is we have this shoelace here, but we have all this extra stuff hanging on the end. So I kind of look at this as if this was a pie and we have all this extra pie crust hanging off over the edge. So what I want to do is create a little uh, cookie cutter type thing so we can get rid of all this extra stuff here. 
All right, so I'm going to deselect and zoom in because I'm going to borrow this shape here. The A key is going to give me the direct selection tool. I'm going to click on this white shape, Command C to copy it onto my clipboard, and then I'm going to zoom out. All right, what I want to do is select all of this guys right here. I'm going to hit Command F to paste it in front. And there you go. So now we have this cookie cutter shape in front of this piece right here that we want to cut off. All right, so I'm going to select this guy, shift click on this other piece, and back over here in the Pathfinder, I'm going to choose this option here for intersect. When I click on it, it's going to get rid of the uh, black appearance. Over here on the, on the left, you see that it actually has a white fill applied to it. So let's just add a black fill. And now we have that pattern we were looking for. All right, let's uh, select them all. Command G to group them together. All right, now I have the shoelace part set up. So let's start working on this aglet portion. Now, this part right here is incorrect. It should actually get thicker as it gets towards the center. So we're going to take care of that right now. All right, the M key is going to give us the rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag right in here. Space bar to reposition this. And once I get this guy set up, I'm going to release the space bar. I still have the mouse uh, pressed down. And I just want to go a little bit beyond the shoelace and release. I'm going to hit the D key to give it the default appearance. And I'm going to bring in these corners by just clicking and dragging right in there. Again, that's part of the creative cloud. All right, let's zoom out a little bit and reposition this guy. All right, I'm going to click and drag while holding down the shift key. And then you see the smart guides coming in to help me out. I'm going to go ahead and release. And I know it's in the right spot because the smart guides were helping me set that up. Now, if your smart guides are turned off, just hit Command U, and that will turn them back on for you. If you want to turn them off, hit Command U again, and that will turn them off. All right, let's work on these little lines here. I'm going to hit the backslash key to activate the line segment tool. And I'm just going to come over here to the left, click and drag while holding down the shift key. And space bar is going to allow me to reposition this guy. And once I get in the right spot, I'll go ahead and release the mouse. All right, with the V key, I'm going to option, click and drag right in here and release. I'm going to select both of these guys back over here in the appearance panel. I'm going to drop it down to half a point. All right, I'm going to grab this top line, option, click and drag. And there you go. Smart guides help me out. Now, while I have this middle guy selected, this one has to be a little bit chunkier. So I'm going to bring it back up to one point and that's going to look good. All right, so I'm going to select both of these guys here. And what I want to do is create a blend in between these lines. So I'm going to hit the W key to activate the blend tool. I'm going to come to this top segment. And once I hover over it, I get this uh, little asterisk next to my cursor. So I'll click on it. Now it's added it to the blend. I'm going to get a little plus symbol when I could add this one to the blend. I'm going to come down over here. And once I get that plus symbol, I know I could add that one as well. All right, so back over here in the tools panel, I'm going to double click on the blend tool, preview. And we're going to change the spacing because this doesn't look right. So I'm going to switch it over to specified steps. And with my arrow key, I'm just going to hit the down arrow key a couple times. And that's going to reduce the amount of steps. Now that I have this guy set up properly, I'm going to click OK. And there you go. All right, so I'm going to come over here to Object and expand this blend that we just created. And I click OK. But if you take a look over here in the Tools panel, they're still set up as strokes. So we want to expand that one more time. Object, Expand. Click OK. And you could even set up your expands as an action on one of your F keys if you'd like. All right, so I got this guy set up here. They're all set up as fills. Let me zoom back out a little bit and select these guys. Click and drag while holding down the Shift key. Smart guides are going to come in and help us out. Now check this out. See how they're not really hanging off too far? I'm going to switch them over here. And that's going to help me cut them a lot easier. I'm just trying to make my job a little bit easier for me here. All right, let's select all of these guys right in here. I'm going to hit Shift M, and that's going to give me my Shape Builder tool. I'm going to hold down the Shift and Option keys at the same time, click and drag to get this little marquee, and release. All right, so you see how I chopped off all that section for us? I'm going to do the same thing over here on the right side. Shift, Option, click and drag. If you get this little minus symbol, you know you're doing it correctly. All right, release. There you go, it chopped off all those sections for us. I'm going to select all these guys make sure they're in a group by hitting Command G. And now it looks like I have all the little pieces I need, but I need to break them up into sections next. So let me grab this shoelace right here. And what I want to do is cut off this section and this section over here. I'm going to use some guides to make sure that this is nice and straight for me. 
So I'm going to grab my, um, my guide over here from the ruler. If you don't see your rulers, hit Command R, and that'll make them come out for you. All right, so I'll click and drag on the ruler. I'm going to come along here. Here's one white triangle. Here's two white triangles. And on the third one, I'm going to come over here until this little anchor point is highlighted, and then release. So that was the smart guides helping me out, and now I know I'm at the exact point that I need to be right there. So let's come over here to this edge. All right, so I got one, two, three little triangles, right? So I'm going to come over here to the top, grab this ruler, bring it down. I have this little horizontal guide now. If I hold down Option, it's going to switch the behavior, and now it's a vertical guide. And because I got my smart guides turned on, it's going to show me the exact point that I need to be in. So I'll go ahead and release. There you go, it's perfect. All right, so let me zoom out a little bit. These guys are going to help me chop these sections up. All right, there's a couple different ways you could chop this guy up too. So I'll zoom in. Now, this is one that I like doing, but uh, you actually have to create some extra shapes for it. So I'm going to hit the M key. I'm going to click and drag and spacebar to reposition it. I'm going to follow that guide and release. All right, with the V key, I'm going to select both of these guys. And then Shift M gives me the Shape Builder tool. All right, I'm going to Shift Option, click and drag, come along here. And it's going to let me know if I've gone too far. If I go over the line, check that out. I get this little highlight over my shoelace. And I know I don't want the shoelace to uh, be removed. So I'm just going to go back a little bit, right over here, and release. All right, oops, I actually left these guys along here. So let me just get rid of those guys. All right, if we take a look right here, everything's chopped off really nicely. There we go. Now I'm gonna come back over here. And what I wanna do is make a copy of this guy. So I'm gonna option, click and drag, and release. Because I want this portion alone, so we don't need this guy. And I need to just cut off this portion here. So I'm gonna show you another way to cut this guy out. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna hit Shift E to grab the eraser tool. And I'm going to Option, click, and drag. When you're holding down Option, it's going to give you this little marquee behavior. You could use this guide right here and release. All right, there you go. So now I have this portion all by itself. Now, if you take a look at this one, it actually doesn't look quite right. If you look at my original one, it looks like a shoelace, but this one looks more like a weird fingernail. And that's just because of the placement of this. So let me select this guy. I'm going to hit Command, Shift, Open Bracket. That sent it to the back of the stack, and there you go. Now it looks better. All right, over here, I need to get rid of this shoelace portion. So let me select this guy. I'm going to hit Shift E to grab the eraser tool. And then I'm going to Option, click, and drag. All right, once I get to this guide, I could go ahead and release. All right, sorry about that. My scroll wheel is a little jumpy. All right, so now we have the aglet and the shoelace all alone. Let me group these guys together right in here. All right, great. Uh, we only have the left aglet set up. So to make the right one, I'm going to make a copy of this guy. O, click and drag while holding down uh, the shift key and release. There we go. All right, so next I want to bring up my brushes panel. So I'm going to come over here to the window menu, scroll down until I find brushes, and I have it set up over here on the right. All right, so let me grab this shoelace portion, click and drag, bring it over to this panel. Once I get that little plus symbol, I'm going to release, and now we have some options. So here we have a scatter brush, art brush, but the one I want to go for is pattern brush. I'll click OK to accept that, and let's give this guy a name. Uh, it's going to be Shoelace2015. All right, great. Now, as we go along, we have a couple different options here, but let's take a look at this preview. I have the shoelace going along here. Here's some corners, but then there's a corner missing here, so let's see what's going on. If I hover over this first portion, you see that it's the outer corner tile. Now, if I click on it, it's been automatically selected to go to Auto Slice. Now, this is a new feature in the Creative Cloud, so if you're using an older version of Illustrator, you won't have access to this. All right, since we're using Auto Sliced, I want to remember that. I'm going to come along here. This is my side tile, and it chose this original one. We come over here. This is the inner corner, which is what we're missing right here. So if I click on that and see what did we choose earlier, we chose uh, Auto Sliced, so let's go with that one. Now over here, this is the start and end tiles, but it doesn't look like we have any options for those. So let me show you how to bring those guys up. I'm going to click OK, and we've already created our pattern brush over here on the right. When I hover over this, you see it says Shoelace 2015. All right, so let me deselect these guys. I want to make sure that my swatches panel is up, and I'm going to grab this aglet right here, click and drag, and just drop it off in there. I'm going to grab this other guy, click and drag, and drop that one off in there as well. 
All right, I want to deselect my artwork and then double click right here on this uh, Shoelace 2015 brush. All right, now when I come over here, click on this drop down menu, now we have access to these little ends here, the aglets we set up. So for this one, I'm going to choose Pattern Swatch 1. And you see it's updated the preview over here. I'm going to come over here and choose Pattern Swatch 2. And that looks good. Now, if you choose the wrong one, it's just going to look kind of weird in here. Don't worry about it. Just come back in here and swap it out. All right, click OK to accept that. And we're good to go. So let me un uh, zoom out a little bit. Get rid of these guys. Delete that. All right, great. So what I want to do is hit the D key to get the default appearance and I'm going to hit the backslash key for the line segment tool and I'm just going to click and drag while holding down the shift key. I'll release back over here in the brushes. I'm going to click on shoelace 2015 and there you go. So now this is that shoelace that we just created. This is a brand new pattern brush. Now if I come over here and hit the P key, uh, hover over this guy, holding down the option key, I can click and drag on this and make some changes and everything updates automatically. All right, so I'm gonna option, click and drag on this, option, click and drag on this, and there you go, it keeps updating as we go along. All right, if I hit Shift W, I get the width tool, and that's gonna allow me to click and drag on this point, and there you go, so now this looks like it's closer and this part's getting further away, and you could just kinda come along here and keep making whatever edits you need to. All right, so let me get rid of that. Because next what I want to do is grab my Wacom tablet. All right, now that I got my Wacom tablet set up, I'm going to come back over here. And let's go along here and grab the pencil tool. All right. So I want to make sure I have this guy activated. I'll come back in here. And let me just draw something out. All right, so here we go. Now let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Great. There you go. I'm just drawing out something really basic, basically just because I know how to spell my name. So I want to go ahead and take care of it that way. So now you can see with the pencil tool, how that pattern brush really starts becoming into a lot of fun. All right. So if you have some plugins in there, like, you know, I like playing around with the astute graphics plugins. They have one over here. It's called the with gradient tool. I'm going to click on it to activate it. And with this guy, check this out. I could click and drag and make edits to all of those strokes at the exact same time. So now I'm getting a little bit more of like some kind of flaring action, like if you were to be playing around with like a spray can or something like that. So see how it's getting thicker towards the top and thinner towards the bottom? That's because of the settings that I have applied over here on my with gradient panel, which is again made by Astute Graphics. Well, there you have it, folks. That's how you make a shoelace pattern brush in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014.